Well we've done part one now of the drawing, showing you how to scale this up, what I did with the composition, how I used the computer to add a figure in and so on, and how we expanded it. Now we're on to part two, which is going to be using the sponge rollers to do the primary coats, the slightly transparent coats uh, that I'm going to build up over. I should be able to see my drawing just through them, but I want to get these lovely delicate effects of light and colour that we can get with the sponge rollers by using them almost like a glaze, one over the other. Once I've got those basics in, then I can come back with stage three with the brushes, probably mainly using flats, but we'll see where we go. And there's this play that we're going to have between the figurative and the abstract, between having a photograph that is a real image and actually just enjoying and using the colours for the abstract qualities and the beauty that they've got of their own. Right then, on we go with the sponge roller. And before we use the sponge rollers, that's this little fella here, uh, let's look at the actual paints we're going to use and the colours we're going to use. Let's explore those slightly and talk about the different sorts of paint that we've got in acrylics. Now I've made my own Stay Wet palette using a large sandwich box. As long as you've got about three or four inches in depth, it'll work just fine. All we do here is take a sandwich box, add two layers of paper towels, one layer of greaseproof paper or cushion paper, soak that with water, and those paints will keep wet almost indefinitely. They go on for six months or so. I mean, I've left my paints in France, come back and still found them wet after half a year. Um, so, good idea for a Stay Wet palette, nice and cheap, economical. I've got a whole plethora of different colours here, and uh, types of colour, and what I'm using mostly these days are the heavy bodies. The System 3 uh, heavy bodies were very good, but they're no longer doing those. I have found now changing across these abstract series of paints, that's these ones in the bags, are quite good because you can get every bit of paint out of them, you can squeeze it right out, whereas with the tubs, which give you good value, you've got to get in there with a spoon, get them out. Um, it's not quite so easy to use, but these bags are very good. System 3 continue with the ordinary um, paints. And then we've got a whole series of uh, other cheaper paints that we can use. But remember, the cheaper the paint, the more transparent they tend to be, and the thinner they are. They don't go quite as far. So I prefer heavy bodies for nearly all of my work. Um, as I say, these abstract series are quite good, Krilla colour are quite good, gold are very good but they're more expensive. But I've just come across these, these uh, specialist crafts ones, which they do in times two, times four, times six, times two are pourable, these are intermediates, and then the times six are the heavy bodies. Now these are coming out at just over four pounds a tub, which actually is very, very good value. So let's do a little test with those before we even start this painting. Let's just put some of these paints onto uh, a surface with a black band across it to see how well they cover that from white to black, how they're going transparent, which colours are which, and just how good the quality is of these. Um, to give you an idea, we've got all sorts of different ones here from Reeves um, right the way through. So we'll do a little test on the acrylics to give you an idea. Now you can get various mediums to go with acrylics. You can even add PVA glue to acrylic to make it thinner and pourable. So you can get the cheaper pourable paints, you can buy various mediums to build them up, to fill them. Uh, but all, all we're really concerned with in this case um, is using the paints direct. We're not making textural works, I've got other films on that. We're just using the paint direct with a knife, with a brush, with a sponge roll. Right, right for this little experiment, what I'm going to do is a black stripe across twice over. See how well these paints cover that black and then go through to transparent, shall we? These various paints and the effects we can get with them. What I'm using at the moment is a System 3 black heavy body, so you can see how well that's covering already. Um, but that covers pretty well, doesn't it? And that's the sort of effect that I want with my painting normally, if I don't want transparent effects. And of course I can thin it down. I mean, there's nothing to say I can't just take some water and make that thinner. You can see the sort of grey effect. For applying paint, um, let's just talk about what we're going to apply paint with. There's my Stay Wet palette again, and here's my selection of brushes and so on. And you see here, I don't need that many brushes for acrylic or oil work. Try and keep your brushes separate, one set for oils, one set for acrylics. The oil brushes tend to get oil-based paints on them, they don't work as well with acrylics, the water-based ones. But these same brushes will work for both. I'm using um, some lovely long-handled nylon brushes here that I like very much. And um, I use both filberts, which is the rounded flat end and the square flat ends. Um, I find that you know, if I want flat, large brush strokes, then the flats are great for that. If I wanted more rounded strokes or softer blended strokes or leaves, then the filberts are perfect. 
and with those I keep the ordinary small rounds as well. So I go from my smallest zeros right up to about a ten um, in both flats and filberts and rounds. I also keep a little rigger and I keep some bigger brushes for doing larger brush strokes as well like these ones which are lovely. My favourite palette knife, painting knife, is this one. It's a right-handed one for me. You can get those in both directions but that particular blade has a lovely shape as you can see so it's very diverse and I keep various uh, spatulas as well even coming right up to big trowels, cement trowels and icing um, knives which are quite good as well for painting with and then a big old baking tray for mixing my paints in got the colour back on my stainless palette there jar of water, sponges as well for texture the sponge rollers here that I mentioned just now we're going to be using those first of all in this one and for texturing I also keep other tools like forks and things when I mix fillers with PVA and so on or even with the paint to make textural surfaces. When the paintings are finished the acrylic does sink. You can see on here the slightly shiny surface of the wet acrylic and the drier slightly matter finish here. This is a water-based varnish. This is the Cobra one that I like particularly. This one comes from the SAA. Uh, water based in fact that you can paint into it and over it and rework it and it will go on oils just the same it's just it's a great little varnish about 11 pounds tin um, and I tend to use the aerosol varnishes more than the um, brush on ones they're so much easier one or two coats of this it does, it does a painting but as the acrylics sink and oils sink then it, they do need varnishing after it's also for protection next up and that if you want an oil based one would be retouching varnish which can be lifted off with turpentine or white spirit but it does mean you can retouch or clean the painting. If you use a mastic varnish, it's permanently on, it can discolour, not such a good idea. So retouching varnish or these newer uh, water-based varnishes which are good for both. So for this demonstration I'm going to use a one inch flat um, just to lay the paint evenly across the darks and do a bit of glazing as well. We're going to look at the Specialist Crafts times six bodies. I'm also going to show you later the free flow body from Specialist Crafts, which is a nice flowing body that can be poured. We'll look at the different whites and how they, how just how opaque and thick they are. This one's well and now landing a little white from them. We'll be looking at the new abstract ones from the bags here, looking at the different yellows. Yellow is always a difficult one, it tends to be transparent. Um, it's hard to get a heavy body um, yellow, so I've got one here to show you as compared to here the A2. Then I've got the graduate cheaper acrylics, the Galeria, the, uh, the acrylic, uh, the, the acrylic colours, the Chroma, um, Winsor & Newton, uh, Bio Studio acrylics, System 3 heavy bodies there, and uh, the Essentials, which is a, again another cheaper one. So it'll give you a, quite a good idea. The only one we haven't got to use is the Golden, which are of very, very good quality, but very expensive as well. So it depends what you want. But we'll, we'll try out these ones just to give you an idea of the variety uh, of prices and the consistency of the paint. First of all, let's take a look at the different whites. Let's use a System 3 original first of all and just see how opaque that is. Again, um, hardly going to use any water on the brush. I want to see what the paint does directly straight from the pot here. On a little bit thin, you can see the black showing through there. It's quite slimy in feel. I've got to add on very thickly to be able to cover that, but it will go on quite well. So System 3, not bad, but that's the original, not the heavy body. As compared to that, let's look now at a um, time 6, a top grade of the Specialist Crafts. So this one should be really heavy body. You can see the difference immediately. Look at the thickness of that compared to that. So this is the heavy body Specialist Crafts and I'm very pleased with that. Now we'll go down to another heavy body which is the abstract one in the packet here and I've been quite pleased, I've been using these, I've been quite pleased with them up until now though the colour range is being increased which will help and that's also very nice, a little bit slimier so in fact I think the Specialist Crafts so far is coming out tops on that but that's not bad. Next we're going to use a cheaper one so this shouldn't be quite as good. This is the uh, Royal Landigle. So it's cheaper paint altogether and uh, see how this performs. Again clean my brush, dry it up on paper towel, straight into it. It's already quite jelly like inside here 
not bad, but you can see how thin it is. You can, you can actually see the black showing through there, and it's much more jelly-like. It's again, it's in between. It's just up from that cheapest one we started with there. So not so good, but uh, for the price, you get what you pay for. That gives an idea on just the whites. Look closely at those. Then we've got the System 3, the Specialist Crafts, and then the other two coming down here, the Abstract and the um, Cheaper Paint. Let's go on now to um, colours. The biggest problem paints I've found is yellow, because yellow, um, usually in acrylics especially, tends to be very slimy and thin, very transparent. Let's just take a bit of this. This is heavy body lemon yellow, and I've always found lemon yellow to be the, the worst of them. We'll just place that across here, and you see how slimy that is, and this is a heavy body as well. And this is the old System 3, so it's almost impossible to get a good, thick, heavy body lemon yellow without putting several coats on. Now this should be quite interesting, because this is the times 4 and the times 6 of the medium and the heavy body of primary yellow. I think the primary yellow is less transparent. And we'll try the primary yellow first of all, and this is the Specialist Crafts again that I've been quite pleased with so far. Dry my brush. This one then, the primary yellow in the medium body. No, that's quite thin, very similar. Very similar to the heavy body, in fact, of the um, System 3 heavy bodies. But now I'm going to go on to the actual heavy body, the times 6 one. As I say, just over £4 a tub these, I think they are going to be excellent value. Right, so again, good brush of this, primary yellow, and look at that. Now that is what we're after. Nice, straight, heavy body, straight on there, look beautiful. Go deliberately to a Windsor and Newton Galeria. Perhaps I'm being a little bit unfair in this, in that I'm using this Opera Rose, which I know can be an awful colour because it dries transparent. So I put it on, you can see how thin it is already, look, you can actually see it sliming on there, but even if I put it on very thickly, I could deliberately show you this, so I'm just less laying it ever so lightly on there, ever so thick, this stuff goes on beautifully, it's a wonderful colour. If you mix it with white, it's not so bad, you, you can get a very nice bright pink, but with these, sometimes these cheaper paints and some of these more unusual colours, they tend to dry right down transparently and even disappear. So we're going to let that dry a bit, and you'll see how that's going to, as it dries, just disappear. While I'm on the pinks, I'll take another cheap one, a graduate acrylic, the Dale Rowney. Again, for the money, not bad, but let's see the difference. Take some of that on my brush. Uh, not bad, actually, that graduate. That's a good intermediate paint. Not unhappy with that quality, especially in that colour, that's magenta. And that's gone on about medium, medium range. That's what you'd expect from a medium quality paint. Let's go on now to a very cheap one, the Essentials Acrylic. And we'll take a, a, a light magenta in that. There we go. And you see, actually not as bad as I expected. Not bad coverage. Slightly more transparent, but... You, now you start to see the upper rose disappearing, look, it's starting to dry out and you can see the black actually coming through. So the cheaper paints you get this slimier, slightly more filler and um, glue in it if you like, uh, more acrylic medium in it rather than the pigment. Let's go now on to a Chroma A2, in this case raw sienna, and we'll see how that goes on. That's quite nice. Again, it's a medium texture. It's not as heavy as the heavy bodies, but that's not bad. Chroma A2 then. And while we're on the chromas, let's take a little bit of the opaque light yellow. So being opaque, it should act like a heavy body. It shouldn't be transparent. Let's mix up some of that. It's quite an old paint. This one, it's gone rather solid on me. It's not the fold of the paint, but it's just old. But that is not performing too well at all. Very jelly-like and no, not happy with that at all. Now, one of the good ones, but not cheap, is Krilla Colour. So let's take some Krilla. And this time in Cobalt Green, which is a lovely colour. 
that's quite nice but it's going on it has a job to take to the paint it's going on rather and I've always been quite pleased with Killer, but in this case it's it's a good even thick coat once you get it going, but it didn't like to take too well that one. But I would certainly recommend the acrylers as being quite a good paint, uh, even if they're a little bit pricey. Now we're going to take a Winsor Newton Galeria, and it's a very similar colour of deep turquoise. That's gone on very nicely. That's Winsor Newton Galeria, and they're not a bad price paint. Um, that's gone on quite well. A little bit transparent, a little bit thin, but actually, money for money, not bad at all. And whilst we're on cheaper paints, let's look at the Pabillo, which do produce some very nice stuff. I do like the Pabillo masking fluid, especially the blue-grey masking fluid. And actually, that's not, it's not bad. It's gone on quite well, but it is slightly transparent. It is a bit thinner. It's not covering as well as I would like, but not bad. Um, with a good thick opaque white, it might, uh, it might colour quite well. We were looking at the abstract white earlier. Let's just look at the abstract this time in cerulean blue and just see how well that covers. Now this is the heavy body again, remember. Let's see how well that covers compared to that Pebio. Oh yes, that's... Uh, not bad that abstract, that goes on quite well look and that's a heavy body, immediate coverage and you can see the difference in the black showing through here on the video and solid colour there with the, with the abstract and these nice bags of abstract. So I think that just about covers those various makes of paint at the moment and gives you a, a good idea of how these cheaper and more expensive colours will work. Perhaps we should look at mixing next a little bit. You can see here how that white now, the cheaper ones are drying out, a bit like the cheaper Opera Rose there. They're going more transparent, whether this is the better heavy bodies here have remained nice and opaque. We can't see through them. The same here with the yellows. What I am going to do just before we finish off is show the difference in that and oil paints. We've got some Students quality oil paints here, some Winsor & Newtons. Let's take the uh, lemon yellow hue here and I'll just loosen them on my finger and you can see again the thickness of that, the opaqueness of that. Even that in an oil paint is not as heavy as I would like. It's certainly as good as those cheaper acrylics there but it doesn't match that heavy body yellow of the Specialist Crafts. So lemon yellow is always going to be a problem, I think. You can see if I thin it out there, just how thin that is. Whereas if we take cadmium yellow on this, it should be better. Yeah, that's got a better covering power. It's the lemon yellow that's always been difficult. So I have had to use oils over acrylics before now to get the vibrancy I want. Here's a bit of um, scarlet. And again, nice and thick and heavy. And that's just with my finger, so a brush would have laid it on much thicker. And some magenta at the finish. Show the magenta as compared to... It's quite a dark magenta this one, but you can get the idea of it there. Look. And if we paint it with white, that's how light it would be. And if you paint it thinner and more transparently, you can see it going almost as transparent, as almost as pink as the acrylic there over the white. But surprisingly enough, the specialist craft have come out on top drier as some of these paints almost disappeared as they dry. This rose that I mentioned before, the Opera Rose certainly has, and the cheaper yellows you can see, even though the heavy body there, System 3, uh, has disappeared uh, to lemon yellows and so on, they, they aren't as uh, opaque as they need to be, whereas the uh, more expensive ones and the heavier bodies, the uh, especially as crafts and so on, are better. Even here, the cheaper paint and the turquoise have disappeared. You can see with the whites, there's that lovely heavy body, clear, bright, vibrant and opaque, whereas the thinner ones are disappearing. So there's a the difference in your acrylics. Let's look at the one last final one, the pouring body, which is a much thinner one, just to show you the viscosity and how it can be used. I'm not going to go into all the techniques of blending and scumbling and the various ways of using acrylics here. We've done that before in other films. Just, just the very basics. Now here's a pouring body. This is the uh, 
specialist cross free flow acrylic and you can see you can actually pour it like this with the, with the other pots you certainly can't do this you can trickle it on trickle it around splatter it move it around you can do that with ordinary acrylics anyway but not too thin it's, it's quite a nice medium it could be used uh, obviously in several coats several layers you can see that uh, free flow can be poured trickled uh, you can use the syringe splattered or you can use as I say PVA glue with the acrylics or a medium, acrylic mediums to thin them down and pour them as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how I have developed to use the roller and that is that I mix the paint using a larger brush, usually a big flat or a filbert like this, into my mixing tray and then I roll my roller through the brush to get all of the paint out of the brush into the tray. Make sure the sponge is just damp to start with, not too wet otherwise you'll have a very wet mix coming down your canvas and uh, we gradually layer it up it can be rather thin so make sure that we put plenty of paint in on the first coats you can make it reasonably thin so you can still see your drawing through but you don't want the texture of the canvas still showing at the end finally if you work in this way you don't need to wash your roller out very much that might surprise you but right let's start with a nice pink colour here we'll take some of this light um, magenta, blue grey magenta and a little touch of yellow into that just to give it a slight tint and then as I was saying roll the roller which has already been dampened through the brush through the paint like this until it's nicely and evenly coated. Do make sure it's nicely and evenly coated. Now it's the same advice that I give with all of my painting when we first start and that is that when you've got a colour on your brush, or in this case on your roller, use it wherever it's going to be. So if it's going to be here and elsewhere, then put it in all of those places now. Where is it going to be going? Well, we're going to have some work right around this area here. Now you can see I can just see my drawing through it, which is very useful because I want to be able to put a thin coat on at first. As long as you cover this canvas up, it's an important thing and then work my coats over it afterwards. And now wherever it is, I want to be plonking it in there. And then I'm going to work right over this with another colour in a minute to show you how we can glaze with these colours. Get some wonderful effects doing this. And it's surprising how you can use the roller, not only flat, but as an edge. Let me just show you some of that now. So I've got my roller and I can use it not just flat like this, but I can also use it as a thin edge look to roll along and get a thin line like that if I need to. And we can adjust the colour as well. So rather than having to keep mix it, I can add colours. Right, need to add more yellow to that. So I'm not having to mix any new colours, I'm just taking some yellow and adding it into it. Well, I'll roll it through that, through the brush again. And we can start to bring that colour up into here and glaze it over. You see these lovely effects we can get by now. To glaze this colour over. Beautiful, beautiful effects we can get with a sponge roller that you cannot get as easily with a brush. Rapidly we can build up this way. Just, just to start off this evening, so I want to carry on with this in better daylight because the light isn't very good for you to see this at the moment. To make it more orange now, so I'm still adding colours into it. I'm not even having to change the colour itself. Roll my roller through that again without having to change or wash the roller. And we'll come back up into here, this beautiful orange area now. Then we orange. I don't want too many lines through it, so I'm just working the roller gently across. So I don't want the edge of the roller too much on this. So again, if you see it elsewhere, you know it's elsewhere. Come in there with it. There's going to be more yellow here later. At the moment we just want to get these base colours in. While it's on my roller I'll just show you how we can use this. Even now. Another way of using the roller too is not to roll with it but to actually smudge with it like this look. So we can smudge the roller a little bit and drag it across the canvas rather than 
even smaller spots of colour, which we can do with the brush later as well, but we'll just get them started off. And uh, probably going to finish in a minute, just for enough for this evening. So it's just to get provisional preliminary coats on to show you how it can work. There we are, that's enough for this evening I think, just to, just to get us started off. And we'll continue that tomorrow. Well here we are, morning is broken again and back into this one. Let's um, really enjoy now all these lovely delicate colours I'm looking forward to mixing and playing with here. My roller again ready and off we go. Just lovely colours when we bring them out. That's why I like to explore with the photographs and take them further. I, I digitise the photographs and um, do posterising with them which brings out these beautiful colours separates the colours out a bit as well for myself. Subtle colours, we'll just bring it up gradually here. I really love these colours. That's why I was looking forward to doing this painting because I knew I got to really enjoy mixing these and making them work on here. A bit stronger, I'm going to put a bit of alizarin into it now and make it slightly stronger and deeper and warm sort of blue purple. Gently bring up the tones of this girl with the use of these. Uh... You see the figures starting to appear here now already. I have no time to think. We're just working with colours so fast and enjoying this so much. There's barely time to even think on about it. I don't want to leave white canvas showing, that's the point. I want to get rid of all of this white canvas that's behind here. And even with the roller you can see just how much of this lovely effect of light we can build up. It often surprises people just how much we can do with uh, the sponge roller before we even go on to anything else. Okay, I'm going to start off with the lighter uh, yellows at first and then work through to my blues and greys because that way I can go towards green rather than um, messing them up. So let's start with some lighter creams at first, just even objects like that by just using a roller across and feeling the colours of the light there. Using it, the paint a little bit thinner now, as you can see. Working towards my oranges, my reds that I haven't really done yet. It should make quite a difference because as I bring one colour in, it's going to affect another colour next to it. So the uh, more, the warmer I make this, then the cooler the other colours will see next to it. I want to do a much deeper red. We'll go down to the rich cadmiums and put a little bit of glitter into it to really give me some body. See how I gradually bring up these other colours as well. When it's on the roller or on the brush, you, you use it where it's meant to be. I need to start going towards my blues before I take a break. So I need to wash everything out again and uh, watch the drawing now because I'm working at an angle and I can't actually see straight on it so I've got to be careful I don't start as I was saying when I was drawing it out working in perspective. Interesting as I build these tones up you can start to see how they work. Right, <laughs> let's try some um, light blues now and uh, work towards, we just work at some of these blues, bring out the warms. So, let's start with some turquoise. We can work through to the warmer blues after that. Not dribbles, but we don't want texture. I want to make a sort of duck egg colour now, so I'll take a little bit of yellow into that to make a, a greeny tint and a little bit of warmth. 
with some light magenta and it has to come right across here as well. I've got to reach across my canvas to get to this one. Plenty of light into it and we'll make a very light version of it. As you can see we've got the haziness, we've got the light in the picture now just by using the rollers only. And back to my blues again. I need to do more blue into it. So I'm going to go to much stronger blues now. I'm going to go to ultramarine. I'm going to start to feel these darks. Before, this is before I put the darks in, so I don't put the darks in yet with a very deep Prussian and even a bit of black later on as well. See now a bit more what we were after. Let's just go for some darks. I'm going to take some Prussian blue and a bit of brown. Just do a wee bit more. I'll take a bit of black and just show you what black does when it actually hits the surface of this. It really is dark. I have to put things in in detail to get the impression of them. So we're going with impression. Of light. Beautiful effects of light we're after here. Look at these effects of light now, we're almost there with the sponge roller. Try not to do much more now with this, just to pick out these little bits of highlights and the feelings of tables and chairs and whatever's around here, various places. A little green, I'm going to take a little green into it. Just the smallest touch can make the biggest difference. No, you know, you could be tempted to just leave it like that, couldn't you? But it is quite nice. But I don't think we will. I think we're going to take it a bit further yet. Right. So this is the second part of the film finished. Doing the sponge work. Yeah.